you know. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I've seen some things where people can manipulate it and, you know, with a combination of a private money lender and a hard money lender. So with both of them come together, the problem I have that is if you're a beginner doing that. If you're if, if you're an expert and, and you have your numbers down, that is no problem. 100% agree with that 100%. But if you are a very a beginner and you haven't done not one deal, you haven't done not one rehab, more than likely you're wrong on your numbers. More than likely you're going to go over budget and, you know, kind of go, you know, that is going to um, get you just in hot water. You're going to be upside down in that deal, you know. Yeah, and then, yeah, I agree with yeah. that. Yep. So, um, you know, with that being said, so you're at, at 19 years old. You sold your business on a kind of like a land contract. I don't, you know, where you're like, okay, well, I may not get the entire entirety up front. But at least I can set myself up for the next 10 years where I'm getting a reoccurring payment and I'll work on something else. Yeah. So one of the keys to uh, business and real estate is uh, multiple streams of income. So you hear people talking about that. You want to invest mm -hmm. in you want to invest in some over here. You want to invest in some over here. You want to invest. Right. Over here. And and that was what. Uh, starting this small business and selling it allowed me to do is I've now got multiple streams of income. I've got the income coming in from the lawn care and landscaping business, even though I'm no longer doing one minute of work. And that way I can dedicate every minute of work into another stream of income. And I did uh, construction uh, then. I, I worked in construction industry. I was a superintendent. I uh, started a construction business and started earning that money again. Uh, mm -hmm. to then save it and invest in more real estate. And then of course I had a third uh, stream of income. So I went I went from no income to now I've got three streams of income. I've got the lawn care and landscaping business, which I'm doing nothing for. I've got the mm -hmm. construction business where I'm trading my hours for money again. And then I've got mm -hmm. the real estate uh, investment, which in the beginning, just one property isn't gonna be a yep. very strong uh, income. But again, that allows you to start s snowballing things and start doing some interesting things where you can buy properties more uh, rapidly. So in the beginning of my career, I bought a property uh, every 18 months. Quickly, I was okay. buying a property every year. Then I was buying a property every six months, then a property every three months. And then now we buy two to three properties uh, every month of various uh, sizes. Um, and so it kind of like uh, snowballs. And Warren Buffett's right. autobiography uh, I think it's called snowball because you know his his theory was he started 50 <clears throat> years ago and it just grows and grows and grows until it's an unstoppable avalanche of success rolling down a hill and, and no one can stop it and that's uh, you know what I've been working on oh wow so are these mostly single families do you do multifamily things like that I know you do now you deal a lot with multifamily but in the beginning did you start off with single family? Yeah, so I I didn't really spend much time on single family. Uh, the first property I ever bought was a five unit. Then I bought oh, wow. another unit. And then the third property I bought was a 30 unit. Now it was a very distressed 30 unit. It wasn't like what you'd pay for 30 units today. But um, I, I didn't spend much time on single family. I have I have bought single family and single family is fine. I'm definitely not going to knock that as an investment strategy, but right. I've always focused on what I call uh, small <laughs> to mid size uh, apartment buildings. So that's five units and up, uh, and you know mid size would go anywhere up to like a hundred units. Okay, and how would you find those? Just through wholesalers, through other agents, or anything like that, or would you? be out there cold calling and trying to find those deals yourself. Yeah. So the first whole, the first wholesale deal, deal I ever did was about 15 years in, in business. Yeah. I didn't even know what wholesalers were until about 2016 when I did probably my first wholesale deal. Uh, what I did, what I did is I used a combination of off market and on market strategies. So on market is, you know, uh, work with realtors to make offers on the MLS. Yep. 
And then off market is writing letters, uh, meeting people. Um, and, and, and then another strategy that doesn't work in 2023, uh, but maybe will again in the future, but it worked really well from 2008 to 2015. So like a seven year stretch there is you'd watch listed deals get old and stale, and then you would approach them with a much lower offer or a land contract offer or a very little down land contract offer and pick deals off that are technically listed, but they're just so old that um, yeah. no one's looking at them anymore and you can come in at a, a much more attractive deal. So yeah, lots of different strategies. Uh, now, a big one is social media. Uh, you'll see me on Facebook, you'll see me on LinkedIn. I'll go yep. viral from time to time with different stuff. More than one deal a day comes into my uh, Facebook, Facebook Messenger or LinkedIn okay. Messenger. Um, now, of course, when you're looking at a deal a day, you've got to weed out a lot of things to try to find yeah. the deals that work for you. But it's worth yeah. it because if you're trying to buy two to three properties a month, you need to have a really big deal flow coming in um, to, to be evaluating all of those deals. Now, now the ones that don't work for you, what do you do with those deals? You just pitch them back? Do you well, some are, with the network? Yeah, some are really horrible. I just say no. <laughs> um, yeah. Some some are in the city of Detroit. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of them are in the city of Detroit. And I, I can't right now in good conscience recommend anyone invest within the city of Detroit right now, uh, just gotcha. because of what's going on with the evictions and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I just tell the people, hey, I'm not a Detroit investor right now. I'm a Metro Detroit investor. I'm not a city of Detroit investor right now. And then a lot of deals, I take an hour or two to evaluate and then mm -hmm. give the person feedback. And then a lot of them we do make offers on. And then a lot of them, I, uh, I'm i not a broker and I'm not trying to earn brokerage fees. I'm not trying to earn realtor fees. But what I do is say, hey, my friend, this guy would be interested in that or here gotcha. meets Zach. You know, here meet Zach Mettler, one of my clients who might be interested in buying it. Yep. And so I do a lot of introductions and, you know, keep, keep the deals. Gotcha. Now, as a wholesaler myself, if you ever have any deals that don't work for you, yeah, and, you know, send them over my way, I'll see if okay. I can help them out. Okay. Be happy yeah. to work with you. I always yeah. give finders fee. I always work things out, you know, no problem. Yeah, so good. So whether, whether it be direct to seller or another, through another wholesaler. So, okay. Yeah. Do you work? One. You work with other wholesalers? Yep. Okay. I, I JV a lot. So. Oh. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. So and sometimes I'm the one that has to tell them the honest to god truth. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah. Uh, just take, what I what I tell people is it's like it's really like people are like people contact me all the time. Hey, yep. hey, Stuart, if you ever have an apartment building that doesn't work for you, kick it to me. And I'm like, well, over 500 people have asked me that. Uh, so you're going to have to do better than that. Bring me some yep. value and get in communication with me more often. And then you'll be top of mind. Like, I'm not going to remember you pinging me Most on January 9th, 2023, a year from now. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Yes. But like, if you, if you bring me value, uh, you know, refer clients to me, refer investors to me, bring deals yep. to me, then, then you'll get into like a tight circle that we work with. Um, and then you'll be top of, uh, top of mind, you know? Most definitely. I try to, I try to follow up with everybody as much as possible. Uh, you know, any, any it, it's all about relationships, no matter what, you know? Yeah, and, for sure. And I don't expect anybody to just hand me over a deal without anything in return. You know, I always pay finders fees no matter what. So yeah, that um, makes sense. Yeah. The whole wholesaling is a, um, it's kind of a world that I've dipped my toes in, but I haven't really lived mm -hmm. in, in breathed it. So, you know, and, gotcha. and people ask me, people ask me, Hey Stuart, how do you buy mid-sized apartment buildings? Okay. I could talk to you for 10 hours about that. And then another person will say, Stuart, <laughs> te teach me how to wholesale real estate. And I would say, Oh, hold, hold up. I'm actually not yep. going to even tell you anything. I'll go talk to this guy, go talk to this guy, yep. go talk to, go talk to Randy because I, I'm not going to spend my time trying to tell you how to wholesale real estate because I'm not an expert in it, but I, I'm an expert in a few, a few things. And so yep. if you want to know how to do this or that, I can speak to you, you know what I mean? Oh, most definitely. And that's another reason why we have this channel is, is I don't want this being a, okay, this is only wholesaling and that's it. I brought lenders on here. I brought other property management companies on here. I brought other people on here. I want to see 
just just because like for instance we had a lender a hard money lender on here and i'm like i want to know what your history i want to see how you got started where you know where you're at now what are your goals and you yeah. know you're not just a hard money lender you know so um you're an investor as well and so on and so forth so like for instance you you have multiple streams of income and you have multiple different businesses so you know the fact that you own your own construction company the fact that you have a landscaping company the fact that you have uh you know even though they're mid-level multi-families you know they're you probably have higher multi-families by now um yeah. you know things like that it's it, it's crazy so you want to bring that value to everybody else and hopefully if they you know get great value they keep watching us and the good thing is is all of on our youtube channel and if you haven't subscribed yet hit subs you hit that subscribe button uh we're on youtube we're also if you're watching on our facebook channel metro detroit off market real estate group uh head over to my youtube channel at randy steadwell and subscribe uh we will you know this will be on there for the archives you know so yeah, it looks like you know uh, there we go look got your video back <laughs> so you know we're trying to add as much value as possible to everybody and uh, so at this point, you have three streams of income. You have your construction business, you have your landscape business that you sold, uh, that's giving you reoccurring income. And then you have, what was the other business as well? Uh, yeah, so we had the landscaping and we had the construction and then we have the first real estate investments. The first real estate yeah. investment. And you know, the, the, key, the key is to save up some money before you start settling into your life. You know, you get married, mm -hmm got kids you've got cars you've got health insurance you've got vacations i just went to disney last week oh my god i couldn't believe how, what that cost you know <laughs> and so the, the key is in your young 20s to, to to hustle definitely go get that job that w2 yep. job but start a side hustle so that your w2 job is paying your expenses and you can save 100 percent of your side hustle uh income and invest it in real estate you've got a short window to 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 really get started on this uh investment career before you start mm -hmm. settling in and you're you're not able to save as much money uh as you could because you've got two cars health insurance you got to pay a babysitter child care you know all those things that start adding up and so that's that's what i did is i really focused on getting my earnings higher saving as much money in my income as possible and investing as much uh, into real estate as soon as you can because um you know don't try to time the market don't wait don't don't get hesitant about investing in real estate get invested in real estate as quickly as possible it's too powerful uh, of a tool for wealth creation uh to wait because remember when you invest in real estate You've got four or five different amazing <coughs> things that, that happen. The, the first thing is you have cash flow. The second thing is you have appreciation. Your property is going up in value. The third thing is you have uh, depreciation, so that that's shielding your income against uh, shielding uh, taxes against your other income. Uh, the third, the the fourth thing is your residents, your tenants are paying down your loan. So that's increasing the spread between uh, the value of the property and the loan just kind of stretches over time. And, and, that, and that improves, that gets better every single day. So it's a huge difference between investing now or six months from now uh, in, right. in, in these benefits. And then of course you've got your cash out refinances, your potential sales of investing. Yes. Um, but I talk to people all the time who said, is now a good time? I say, there is never a better time than now. Um, as long as you buy a property that you can manage well, you got to be. Yeah. So, so on that, you know, they're asking, you know, what do you think of the state of the market is right now? And again, back to what you just said, you kind of just answered it. Uh, but you know, should we buy, should we not, you know, things like that. And, you know, I think you were going into answering that, but I just wanted to kind of reiterate that, that question. Yeah, you should buy a deal that you can manage well or your property management company can manage well. You should buy a deal that you get a couple different benefits on. Are you a sweat equity guy? 
Are you a guy that likes doing the financing and the insurance and, and the construction management? Do a deal that is, is good for you. I, don't, I would not do a deal where you think you're going to increase your rent a whole bunch this year. Uh, rent has increased very rapidly over the last two years. And if you're looking at a deal where the seller says that you can increase it way more, I would be hesitant about that. So make sure you're just doing some tight underwriting on the seller's numbers. Don't say, okay, this guy's charging way too little. I'm going to charge way more. That's dangerous right. in 2023. That might have been fine in 2021, but that's dangerous in 2023.